Hello, so I just finished Heb Hebdij Hebdig. I still don't know how to pronounce their name, so I'm gonna look that up. I'm gonna make breakfast, but wait, no, the fan is gonna. There, I'm sorry. So <laughs> I really enjoyed that reading. It basically talked about ideologies in a way that I haven't. Uh, heard of before because it went, it really went into specifics. Cited people like Marx, Althusser, Barthes, and I feel like I understand them a little bit more now. And towards the end, I really enjoyed it because it was talking about how things that are made to appear like common sense, like when you just accept things. Things that are usually taken for granted are the things that no one questions. But no one ever questions why. And people are just like, because it's common sense. But why is it common sense? Why is it accepted? You know what I mean? So, towards the end, it talks about how certain subcultures or people appropriate things that are supposed to be used for common sense and use it like to piss people off. So, um, let's say. Um, okay, let me just let me just go with the example that I saw in the reading. It just said like safety pins. It can be used for body piercings and stuff like that, even if it's not meant for that. So that's just an example. And I really like that towards the end, they start talking about um, <laughs> certain subcultures like like punk and like mod. <laughs> like, I don't know. It's just so cool. I'm not really gonna get like too into it. Because I, I highly recommend that you read it yourself. But I have a bunch of quotes I will share with it with y'all by the end of the week. Yeah, forgot to say it, but it is day one of week 11? I don't, I don't know anymore. I'll double check. Uh, yeah, um, but it's day one. So, <laughs> breakfast time. My eyes always do this. It's not that bad today. Oh, oh, there it is. We love reading. Hello, so it is currently, what is it? Day two, week 11, I believe. And I'm currently having breakfast. And I'm about to watch Netflix. And also, I just finished listening to Dos and Uno and uh, Weezer's Green Album. Because I, as you can see... I washed my hair and exfoliated, so I knew that I had to do this early, which I don't usually do, nor do I do both on, on like in like one go. I mean, I used to like in high school and I had a lot of time, but not anymore. I like to divide them up into two days, but I don't do that anymore, and I suddenly did it, and it was actually pretty quick. Anyways, um, I braided my hair because I wanted to be wavy and have volume because I'm um, my layers are growing out and I don't like it, but I also don't want to have layers that are short because I won't be able to do hairstyles like this. Anyways, I'm about to watch a show and today I will do my two papers, the one on Madame Bovary, which the deadline has been extended till tomorrow, but I want to finish it today. And we'll also finish the Kana analysis today. So that's why I'm doing everything early, so wish me luck. I don't have the energy to do chapter 8, 9, 10, 11, Le the, the, only, the last two chapters I have to read um, of part 3 of Madame, Madame Bovary because my eyes were turning red last night and I don't have the patience to do that anymore, at least like for before the paper. I can like go back to it anytime but I just want to get it over with and we're supposed to like write about the passages that mom gave anyway, so like, it's fine, I'll just go on schmoop or something. Cliff's notes, uh, spark notes. <laughs> yeah, so that's just the update for today, uh, for this Tuesday, and then I, I plan on, when I'm done with everything, I plan on reading the 24 page history text, and then maybe the foot cell module, because tomorrow I have a whole day of class once again and i was able to actually be productive yesterday and answer 
replied to three of my classmates on the discussion board of Inlet 42 and put my answer. So basically the question was like, what practice or text like goes against he hegemonies or even oppression, something like that. And a lot of people talked about like really interesting things. Like one of my classmates said that the New Testament is very like different from the Old Testament. And like, I'm not gonna get into it, but like, I saw some really good digs. And what else did I see? Oh yeah, cause like, like I said, right, th there are a lot of thing norms that aren't questioned. Like example, one of my classmates said, uh, you like in schools, how dialects and Tagalog are demonized. Okay, not really demonized, but like othered, discouraged in schools. So like, you know, who started that? And I, I replied, I added stuff like, yeah, it really does show a little bit of the, you know, col colonial mentality and like the roots of that and stuff like that. And laced with a little bit of classism. I'm sorry that my, my camera keeps like flying up because like I keep di getting distracted and look looking away. I can't maintain eye contact for crap unless it's like uncomfortably, uncomfortably intense. Like, but like, um, yeah, Louis here. Um, him and Gucci have been fighting. So like, if you have any tips for them to stop fighting, um, I would love that because he has a few wounds and it's very concerning and I don't want them to fight and kill each other. So yeah, hope that I can do this today. I'll update you when I'm done with everything. Wish me luck. Hello, so it is currently Wednesday, day three of week 11, I believe, and today I was able to actually do a lot, so I went to Inlet 60 class, I submitted my second response paper on Madame Bouverie, I went through the Inlet 32 module, I went through the Inlet 60 module, I downloaded the texts for Enlit 42, I revised my cover letter, and I revised my resume, and I cleared my emails, and I fell asleep for like, for like an hour, <laughs> but I'm, uh, right now, honestly, this may be a bad example, but there was a reading on Kezon, and like, after all the stuff I did today, I don't feel mentally prepared to do that. So I just read like... Was that like... Seven pages out of like... Out of like 30. <laughs> but like, you know, I think I got... Enough of what I needed to know about it. And mom said anyway that just take what you need and like... Whatever, because like given the time, it's not realistic as well to like really... You know, take your time. So like, I appreciate that. So, that's what I did today, and I also plan on starting my Kana paper tonight. And I just um, participated in the discussion and um, in the quiz. I tried to answer the quiz by guessing, which is bad. Don't do that. I just wanted to see if I could get away with it. Um, there's two attempts, so I'm, I don't know if I'm going to attempt it again. Because I feel like most of it is just like stuff I already knew from the last discussion so it was really easy but the first part really caught me off guard which was like an essay part anyways we were talking about commonwealth era and the reason why I'm taking my video now specifically is because there's a part here about Incarnacion Alzona or Incarnacion depending on who you ask um, I think she's awesome imagine she was the first Filipina to obtain a doctor of philo philosophy degree from Columbia University in New York in the field of history and she was a suffragette and am I using that right? she was formally involved in the women's suffrage movement after her election as president of the Philippine Association of University Women in 1928 she was a feminist she was active she would publish a lot of like papers about like women she wanted she would get involved in like debates about wanting women to vote and a lot of her archives and works are in the Atenea library 
the Filipino Women's Archive in the Philippines and a special collection in the Rizal Library, which is great because I think, I believe, we're the only, here, what was this? Oh yeah, we're the only one, we're the only Filipino Women's Archive in the Philippines. I just want to say that I really love, love writing about, like, Filipino women in history. My first paper in freshman year was actually about Filipino women in in history, particularly, like, the Spanish era. And, like, there are so many stories that haven't been told, and I just love writing about that, like, the unsung heroes of their time that barely get any recognition, who play just as important roles that are just as important as men's. I'm serious. Like, a lot of them were actually fighting. But you don't hear that, right? <laughs> Anyways, um... I'm babbling because my brain is not working, but... Women. Amazing. There's still so much erasure of women in Philippine history, and I really hope that more stuff can be unearthed and uncovered, honestly. And just not reduced to, like, she was a nurse. You know what I mean? Uh, I can't believe I have a freaking assignment on May 8th. I'm kind of scared to do it. It's due on Saturday, 11.59, so I'm just gonna start doing that soon. Anyways, much to do. I'll check in with you again tomorrow. This video is long. <laughs> Bye. Quick video for day four. It is currently 1.05 a.m. So it's technically day five, but whatever. Um, I took a three hour nap today. And <laughs> I'm about maybe just a little bit over halfway of my critical analysis paper. And holy crap, that is huge. I have one here too. Bruh. So, anyways, right now I'm trying to get in like a few pages of my Mansfield reading for my Enlit class. So, tomorrow I can finish my paper, um, proofread it, turn it in, finish reading this, start reading the other one, um, start looking at the applications for my internship, and um, start the Zotero thing this is on Saturday and I have to attend a birthday on Saturday so I really gotta do all my work and yeah lots of stuff to do but we can do it I'm really sorry about the background noise right now because the fan is facing this direction I hope it's not too bad uh yeah I'm gonna finish this page and then I'm gonna go to bed see you tomorrow hello it is Friday, so like day 5, but it's like 1am, so it's like day 6 now. I was able to finish my Kanat paper, so that's great. Um, I also finished the Mansfield reading, which was great, by the way. I'm currently trying to read at least 2 to 3 pages of the Bordeaux reading, because tomorrow I will be doing the Zotero thing for history. I was gonna do it tonight because I had- I was gonna attend a lunch <laughs> Like, for birthday, small gathering of like, if you just less than 10 people That sounds good, but I don't want my dogs to fight while I'm gone And I don't think anyone else can stop that from happening if like it was just one person around you know what i mean so i just don't want that to happen that's why i have to like not go which is making me sad because yeah uh anyways i'm gonna finish this page and go to sleep hello my cousin and my sister are in this room so if you hear sounds that's them um Welcome to day 7. It's currently Sunday. Um, 
my hair looks weird because like I did space buns a while ago and now this side looks like a broom. So um, today I took a two hour nap, plucked my eyebrows and you know the usual stuff. And right now I'm actually writing all of the inf in <laughs> important information I need for my internship stuff. I think I'm gonna apply to three, like, yung union ng some, yeah. Um, if you see this and actually get hired by you, please don't think that I hate you because um, I, I need I need this. So I, I think I'm gonna apply to union, to Admo Press and to Critica Cultura. So I'm writing down all the information right now. I'm about to walk the dogs in a bit though, and then we're gonna watch um, the Gen Z Trauma Iceberg together. So it's gonna be fun, and I wanted to finish the the Susan Bordeaux reading tonight or Bordeaux, but like I'm not sure if I can. <laughs> but it's not that urgent anyway. Like I still have to be done with everything by May 17, and I'm pretty sure I can finish this if I really wanted to. I have a really busy day tomorrow though. I have to run some errands at the bank and like do groceries and stuff. So, um, yeah. Anyways, right now there's nothing like extremely urgent that I need aside from our history midterm that's for Friday and I just need to like go through the other modules and just basically do it as quick as I can and kind of prepare myself to write the final papers of everything so I really hope that I can send out um, edit all of my resume each resume for all three companies and my cover letter, hopefully. I'll try to edit them tonight, although I seriously doubt that I will. I'll, I'll be taking note of everything, and then I have to send them to mom first. So maybe the earliest I'll be able to send it is Tuesday, or maybe late tomorrow, because I'm busy tomorrow, I don't know. But yeah, um, honestly, I'm terrified. I don't know if anyone's gonna want me. And yeah, it's weird. It's really weird, but also I guess I'm lucky because I can do it from the house but also like isn't the point of an internship to like get experience so like, it's also kind of sad because you're also paying for that it's like, gonna be whole intercession just from at home that's kind of, it has pros and cons anyways so like I said no more tip of the week because um, I'm dying but quotes of the week however I have a lot so the grammar was atrocious please forgive me I need an internship. Um, okay, so here. This one's from the Hebdish or Hebdig reading. So this is first without appreciating good appreciating first without appreciating good literature, no one will really understand the nature of society. Second, literary critical analysis can be applied to certain social phenomena other than academically respectable literature. For example, the popular arts, mass communication and so as to eliminate their meanings for individuals and their societies. So the reason why I really like this quote is because a lot of people like to ask what's literature going to be good for in like the real world and stuff. And I feel like this quote perf perfectly summed that up for me because a lot of the things that you learn in literature can actually be applied to different um, subjects and disciplines. So I think that's something that people need to acknowledge more and this quote just perfectly summed it up for me. Here's another one from the same reading. Oh yeah, the reading is called like, it's about subculture, I believe, yeah. This one is, it is precisely its spontaneous quality, its transparency, its naturalness, its refusal to be made to examine the premises on which it is founded, its resistance to change or to correction, its effect of instant recognition, and the closed circle in which it moves, which makes common sense. At one and the same time, spontaneous, ideological, and unconscious, you cannot learn through common sense how things are. You can only discover where they fit into the existing scheme of things. In this way, its very taken for grantedness is what establishes it as a, med as a medium in which its own premises and presuppositions are being rendered invisible by its apparent transparency. So this is basically talking about ideologies and things in general that are taken for granted as common sense so nobody ever questions it. I believe I mentioned this in like um, an earlier day of the of this week's vlogs. I just think that 
I know that there's a lot of like big words in it and whatever, but basically what it's saying is what makes things okay, it's so hard to talk about this without a concrete example. Let's say um an example is the discouraging of non English speaking in Philippine schools. So let's say that's like a, a monolithic rule or something, right? No one questions it. No one is like, uh, why? Because people are just like, yeah, it's common sense, whatever. But it has a lot of things about it that people just kind of under undermine or whatever. Okay, th that sounds... Um, I didn't explain it very well, but that's because the quote explained it pretty well about basically anything that isn't questioned. People just like to take it as common sense of it. No, that's how it establishes its hegemony, because no one is like, um, maybe not or like why. You know what I mean? Like, they're able to perpetuate it further by making it seem like it's just the way things are. That's what it is. I know it's very. It sounds very abstract, but if you read the reading, you'll get it. Okay, so I think I have a few more. Was a Discord notif. Okay, I have two more here. Ideology, sa same reading. <laughs> Ideology has very little to do with consciousness. It is profoundly unconscious. Ideology is indeed a system of representation, but in the majority of cases, these representations have nothing to do with consciousness. They are usually images and occasionally concepts, but it is above all as structures that they impose on the vast majority of men, not via their consciousness. They are perceived, accepted, suffered, cultural objects, and they act functionally on men. Did I say via? Yeah, via a process that escapes the escape zone. It's okay. Yeah, um, that's basically self-explanatory and related to the last one I said, so I don't need to explain that anymore. This is a long ass last video. Okay, here. Same reading. The ideas of the ruling class are in very in air. <coughs> The ideas of the ruling class are in every epoch the ruling ideas, i.e. the class which is the ruling material force of society as at the same time is at the same time its ruling intellectual force. The class which has the means of material production at its disposal has control at the same time over the means of mental production so that generally speaking, the ideas of those who lack the means of mental production are subject to it. The ruling ideas are nothing more than the ideal expression of the dominant material relationships, grasped as ideas, hence of the relationships which make the one class the ruling class, therefore the ideas of its dominance. This is a very important reading, I think, especially for, you know, the social media age. And a lot of, a lot of the people in this country lack quality education and, you know, it's not their fault. Here, and the sad thing is, because of that, they'll absorb almost anything that's fed to them by like the media, especially like like the reading says. The dominant ruling class can just project anything onto them, and they would probably believe it because it's gonna be glamorized or romanticized to shit. So that's the last quote I have for this week, and I'll see you on week twelve. Hopefully, I get an internship. And hopefully, I can keep up with the requirements. So, thank you to my cousin and my sister for being quiet. And say hello, Joel. <laughs> okay, bye.